My name is Ben Jane and I am a senior lecturer here at Marjon and this is a short video aimed at introducing you to some of the tools that we can use to be more effective and efficient at referencing. So referencing is the method by which we um, uh, give credit and acknowledge the sources that we've used in producing our coursework. Broadly falls into two types or two considerations. One is the in-text citations and that includes the names of authors and the dates of work right next to the, um, the concept that we're trying to explain. Then we get to the end of the essay or assignment and then we'll include a full reference list. We'll include all of the work that we've used to, to build that piece of work presented in an alphabetical order. And there are um, methods by which we should present this work. And Marjan guidance is to make use of the APA referencing style which is well documented online and is an internationally known standard format of presenting references. By using this international format it enables us to make use of um, multiple types of tool and online um, help that we can use to try and make this process more efficient. So online you'll see our guidance which complements the main APA guidance, we can, we've got a referencing guide, we have a short quick guides, we have slides. This video is not about the style itself, it's more about how we can do that. And what I'm going to do is go over four tools that can make the process of referencing a lot more efficient. If you find yourself typing out the whole reference by hand, and you do that for every reference, then you really need to try some of these tools because you shouldn't need to do that and not only does it take more time but it can interrupt the flow of work as we're trying to write and read at the same time and with that I'd like to introduce you to the first method which I think is the quickest and the best for avoiding any disruption of your uh, creative flow as you write your essay. So here on the screen you will see my uh, Google Scholar is open on the left and you see I have a, a Word document all ready here to receive some um, citations so what I'm going to do is search in the search bar of Google Scholar, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. What less people seem to be familiar with is this cite function below. So the, all of the results that are returned back to me here, I can click to cite, and then we'll see there are different styles of referencing, but all representing the same paper. So I'm going to click on APA style, and then drag that across and place the reference in. That is how easy referencing can be. And you can see when I say don't need to be typing out all of the reference. This is just one example. I'm going to go for another one. Add that underneath. So this is how I would do referencing a lot of the time. If I'm reading and I'm finding interesting articles, then I will highlight that, drag it into a Word document and write around it. A small trick that's worth knowing about in Word is if you highlight all of those and then press the a to Z button that will then put them into alphabetical order and you can see there within about 30 seconds we have references which are almost ready to go in APA style and they're in alphabetical order one issue I've spotted here is that the S needs to be in capital so another shortcut is to press shift F3 and that will make the first letter of these words capital and I'll go shift F3 there is no perfect way of using these tools, and these, these uh, referencing tools I'm showing you. We do need to be looking at the quality of the reference, but it's still by far and away the quickest method. The next method we're going to look at is one which makes use of the Marjon Library search function, which is also known as discovery. Discovery is the main Marjon search bar which we can see when we go to the library page. So if I now type in high intensity interval training, I'm going to perform a similar search to that which I did in Google Scholar, but this time I'm accessing all of the resources that we have in the library and it makes it much easier to get hold of full text articles. And there are other resources which will be presented to us that we can access in the library such as books. If we find a paper that we're interested in, so we'll say this one here and if we click onto it the discovery um, tool in the library search engine allows us to cite articles so you'll see here we have APA reference so if I highlight that and drag it across 
we can see that we have all caps in the title which is not a good thing so I'm going to use my shift F3 function again to change that that's better off being low and then we'll change the first letter but again much less pain than having to type the whole reference out so similar to Google Scholar um, a couple extra clicks but we do have access to all of the resources at the library's um, disposal The next tool we're going to look at is one called Cite This For Me, which is an online free tool which also enables us to produce more references. So we have Cite This For Me now on the left hand side of the screen and Cite This For Me is the most similar to the previous tool that we used to use which was known as Margen and I'll show you how to use it. So if we're looking for a journal then we can type in the DOI or the article number if we know exactly what we're after or we can also search for similar articles there is like a series of articles for us this is less of a way of finding the article itself and, and more solely producing the citation but if we can see the article that we're interested in we then press the cite button it then offers us a chance to confirm that this is the article we're looking for it then, this tool allows us to look at the nuts and bolts of the reference itself and all the different elements and make changes to those elements before producing the final reference, which is an advantage over some of the other models at this stage. If we think that the citation is complete, then we press complete citation and then it will give us that citation itself. And I can locate it there. We can highlight it and just as we did with the other um, examples we can drag it across and pretty much ready to go there in APA style again if you're using this tool consistently as you write then you can log in as well and you can also save all of these references that you find which you might find of some use although it doesn't allow you to access the, the full documents themselves the fourth and final tool that we're going to look at is Mendeley, which is possibly the most complicated of the four, however it also offers the most amount of tools in addition, in addition to helping you with your citation production, it's also a fantastic tool for helping you manage your articles and once you have a, a library of articles in your second, third year, it allows you to go back and to find and annotate articles which you've previously used but will also be useful in different modules. So it, it's, there's a lot more functionality involved. So let's have a look. So now on my screen, you'll see on the left that I've opened different software. This is not online anymore. This is Mendeley, the desktop version, which is downloaded onto my desktop and um, allows me to look at all of my different articles that I've stored over the various over a number of years. Um, it's worth looking into how you can manage your articles and we'll save that for another day right now I'm going to show you how you can use Mendeley to reference so once you're using Mendeley then there's a function that we can add in at the top here of our Word um, software where we add this whole block here of Mendeley Cytomatic into the tab and that's really easy to do and if you look elsewhere you'll find out how to do it but if I was writing in here then I could get to a point where I want to insert a citation so now if I type in Gebala High Intensity, this excellent tool here will show me the different articles which I have in my Mendeley file. So I'm going to collect that one, um, and let's go for another one, um, okay. So what Word is now going to do is insert two citations in text alongside the text which I've just included. That took a little bit longer than it normally does but you have to believe me that it doesn't take that long normally. I think I've got too many windows open. And then we could write some more rubbish and then I could write another citation in here and let's put a completely different random oh, random 
from the citation. Bear with me a second. Okay, let's put that one in. So we now have three different citations. Once we get to the end of the paper, we can insert a bibliography, known as a bibliography reference section. And you can see here how quickly we did that. This is now, needs to be on a new page obviously, but this is now in order and linked to the text that I put in here. So if I delete this reference here and then refresh, you can see that it's disappeared from there. So they will stay in order. So by staying on top of my fo files in Mendeley, I can use this fantastic tool, which is the, the most advantageous of all of these tools, to produce references both in text and my reference section. So what I've tried to do in showing you those four tools is to give you options. Personally, I use a combination of all of those tools, but I use them at different times. Sometimes I'm trying to produce work really quickly in a short amount of time. Sometimes I might be spending a whole day producing work, and I'll use different tools at different times. What I don't do is I don't write out the whole citation by hand, trying to look up each individual piece, because that takes longer than all of these tools. Guidance is to use the APA referencing style. The tools I've given you uh, examples of are to try and help make that more efficient and effective. So try out these tools. Try and use them at different times. You will get more efficient and confident at using the tools the more you, you use them. Uh, all of the tools are there to help. All of the tools need the human touch. They need the, the human eye to edit them and to know what should be in there and what shouldn't be in there and to finish them off. So they will get you further down the line than doing it by hand. They will save you lots of time you still need to be looking at the quality that you're producing as a whole as well and obviously the quality of the references that you're choosing to use. That's all for this short video. There's a lot more resources and hopefully feel free to flick back through the video and you might be able to work out how to use these tools from this video but other than that come and see me, send me an email, look up how to use these tools, they are worth using. Thanks for watching.